request those who want the PPT files, you are welcome to send me mails, but do it on or after mail. I still don't have the PPT files. Person who has written my email, I am responding to him also. They, I will be having the PPT files from tomorrow. So from Monday, I will be in a position to send them in PDF version. Okay? So I think uh, according to our plan today, we start a discussion on the astronomy in medieval India. And in medieval India, I mean to say actually Siddhantic astronomy was continuing. But main thing that because of outside invasion started coming again and again and the rulers were also coming from outside. It is not like previously the shocks coming, homes coming, but they are getting absorbed here. But uh, this time the rulers were coming from outside. So a lot of uh, activities were interrupted and many went south of Binja. But at the same time, the new influence came and some new types of astronomical activities started. And some of those things we will discuss. So today what we will discuss is uh, that uh, uh, interaction with the West Asian Z's astronomy, which we call. And then uh, important contribution by Swai Jai Singh. And uh, it will be interesting because Though he did not uh, do any fundamentally new work, but uh, his observatories you all see and they stand still as more or less as tourist attraction I must say. So and he played some role in astronomy. Now uh, the northern part of uh, India, uh, the astronomy continued to be pursued but uh, under the influence of West Asian astronomers and Muslim rulers. And as a natural consequence to that, Z's astronomy took roots in Indian soil. What is Z's astronomy? Now in West Asia, uh, West Asia one of the main tasks of the astronomers was to prepare astronomical tables called Z's. Now Z's is a table, astronomical table, and they needed it very badly because they follow also strictly a lunar calendar as you all know. And this, this kind of astronomy, which is primarily based upon the Z's, that is table, they are called commonly Z's astronomy. So there are three types of Z's. One type of Z's is Z's Rashidi, and Z's Hisabi, and Z's Tashil. From the word, I think those who are, know Urdu well, they can find out. One is with observation and one table is based primarily on calculation, used some other, some other person's observation and the last one I am not very sure what is that. Zizet mm. Tahsil is simplified tables for easy application to specific tasks like studying the motion of the moon alone, not the whole of astronomy. And Zizet Hisabi, that Hisab word is familiar to you. These tables presented with the calculated data taking care of various types of corrections and effects in the observed data, but it does not involve observation directly. And Zizi Rashid, 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 not Rashid, Rashid, uh, these are tables of raw data obtained from the direct observation. So these three types of Jesus were there. And, uh, there is nothing fundamentally new, but the name was this because of that historical connection. You know. The uh, first, the no major development in Siddhantic astronomy took place during this period. Much, much later, of course, you will find uh, that uh, towards the end of 19th century, the Samantha Chandrasekhar also developed some new types of instruments and improved the accuracy substantially. But Otherwise, there was no difference. The <coughs> first major impact on West Asian astronomy was made by the early Siddhantic astronomy, as I mentioned yesterday. And it was done through the translation of Sanskrit texts into Arabic. According to S.A. Rizvi, he quotes, the foundation of Islamic astronomy started during the reign of Abbasi Khalifa al-Mansur in 753 AD 
ए कॉपी ऑफ ब्रह्मगुप्ता सिद्धांत और ब्रह्म सिद्धांत और ब्रह्मस्फुट सिद्धांत इट इज द सेम थिंग वॉज ब्रॉड टू बगदाद फ्रॉम सिंध इन सेवन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी ए डी एंड वॉज प्रेजेंटेड टू अल मनसू ए रिटेंशन टाइटल सिंध हन हिंद इट वॉज ट्रांसलेटेड एंड नेम वॉज कॉल सिंध हिंद वॉज प्रिपेयर बाई याकूब इवन तारीख एंड इब्राहिम फजारी लेटर आर्यभट्टियम वॉज ऑल्सो ट्रांसलेटेड बाई अबुल हुसैन आवाजी इन टू अरबिक and the title was arzvad another popular classic was khanda khaddaka you know it was a karana text of brahmagupta's brahmasputra siddhanta now you know karana text were simplified algorithms for direct calculation without going to theory etc and this uh, khanda khaddaka was a very popular uh, karana text and that was also translated as arkand by yakub Ibn Tariq, and these three classics remained as the basis of astronomy in West Asia. According to Syed Sulaiman Nadavi, though Ptolemy was translated as Al Majesty, that's why you call it Al Majest. If you now buy a copy of, uh, 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 in our library we have it. Ptolemy is it is called Al Majest, but actually originally it is Al Majesty. For long, and the Arabic astronomers from Baghdad to Spain clung to the Siddhanta zone primarily. Now, Al Biruni was a very important person in the history of West Asian astronomy. He lived during the 973 to 1048 AD, and was the most important person in West Asian astronomical science. He visited India in. 1017 AD and spent 14 years studying various branches of Indian science and mathematics. Being a scholar in Persian, Arabic, and Sanskrit, he wrote 27 books on different aspects of India. I have a couple of them. Now he held many Indian astronomers in very high esteem, with Brahmagupta at the top. Like Professor C. A. Nalino of Rome mentions, quote. The Muhammadans owe the first scientific elements of astronomy to India. These Indian works had many imitators in the Muhammadan world up to the end of the first half of the fifth century of Hijra, that is, 11th century AD. Till that time, it is the translation of Siddhantic texts were taking. Of course, what really the progress was made was through observation. They contributed substantially through continued. observation which were more accurate and as i will tell you uh, some of the good observatories were developed there much much before jai singh developed the observatories in india now jiz astronomy in medieval india the first jiz was prepared during 753 to 774 by al fazari based upon brahmagupta siddhanta as i mentioned the important work is done by muhammad bin san ali kawazmi who fused three contemporary systems like greek almagest persian zij sahariya and indian siddhanta and subsequently the most noted astronomer in the islamic world was uluq beg spelling is wrong i think it is not uluq it is uluq uluq beg was the most famous and competent astronomer from samarkand in the 15th century ad his zij uluq beg had lasting influence on astronomy in medieval india and formal introduction of jiz astronomy in india was by iltutmish we have heard about iltutmish in history in the 13th century ad he was the first to bring jiz astronomy in india and got it introduced in this system here during the delhi sultanate period amir khusru was also a very competent astronomer and he composed his well known poem on 28 nakshatras as al manazil when the first jiz was compiled in india the court astronomer of firoz shah block 14th century ad mahendra suri compiled jantra raja and firoz shah brahmani of deccan was himself interested in astronomy and actually he uh, at, uh, thought of constructing the first observatory in balaghat in the 5th century 15th century ad but i think it didn't come up because there is no trace of it 
The Imus invasion really destabilized whole of North India and all scientific work came to a halt. Only after the beginning of Mughal dynasty, work on astronomy and astrology started with fresh enthusiasm. Humayun himself was a very good astronomer and nurtured the growth of the subject. Actually, it is told that he fell from the stair while uh, viewing Venus. And he also had his astrolabe and he used to decide timing, etc., everything based on his uh, astrological calculations. So he fell while observing Venus and going backwards and that fall was quite uh, serious for him as you might have read in history books. Ultimately, he died. So Humayun was, of course, not only an astronomer, but he uh, helped development of astronomy. And major calendrical reforms also took place during Akbar's time, you know. Akbar did lot of things and that was another thing, the reform of the calendars. And he also started a new era, not the Hijira, but another one. And there were around 86 Zizis in his time. And for the first time in India, uh, after the Mughal dynasty, that means what is in the going time, that means the grandson of Alamgir, five major observatories were constructed by Jai Singh, which I will discuss. Discussing more GJs and these is not much important because they don't have any fundamentally new contribution to astronomy, so far as India is concerned. So, I think what I will do now that uh, I will discuss the instruments which are used for naked eye astronomy and you have seen the accuracy. See, uh, Jai Singh's uh, the observatories, except one, rest had an accuracy of three minutes of arc. And the biggest one, which you see in, uh, that is, what is that? Parliament Street, <coughs> that is, that has accuracy of one minute of arc. Now, this is one instrument which was very popular amongst the West Asian uh, astronomers, even uh, Hellenistic astronomers and it came to India along with the Muslim rulers, astrolabes, and they are very popular among the Greek also. But however, in Indian ancient astronomy, the astrolabes are not mentioned and it is quite obvious that they are not here. So these devices were for ast astronomical and astrological <coughs> computations, you know. So it consists of a uh, number of disks with various markings, somewhat like a, a circular slide rule, you know. And uh, many computations could be done, calculations could be done. And of course, the astrolabe, just like any sky map, you have to see it like this. Don't try to see it like that, it will be totally confusing. So just as you see sky, it has to be done like that. And uh, this is uh, the basic uh, picture what astrolabe represented. And uh, the principle of astrolabe was based on stereographic projection of the celestial circles on a plane. So, what you do the outer circle here, that represents the Tropic of Capricorn. In Tropic of Capricorn means uh, Makar Kranti, you know, not Karkat Kranti, but Makar Kranti. Then what you do, you divide by two perpendicular lines north, south, east, west. Now you can easily see, you have to view it putting it overhead. Then only directions will match. Then with this O as center, and I think what happened, this epsilon was, uh, I think our 23 and half degrees. The point A was the first point you have to get. And this point A was uh, represented by the intersection of the outer circle and the radial line which is drawn and this angle is the inclination of Earth's axis with the ecliptic plane, 23 and half degrees. So after getting this point, you join E point and A point. Where it intersected this SO line at X and you draw a circle with OX as diameter, radius, and this is the equator. Next, what you do after you get the uh, equator, 
then point B and C, point B and point C are found out because this circle intersected at this point, the line OA at B and you draw a line where this circle intersects line EW <coughs> that is C, join these lines, then this intersects the line SO at D and then draw a circle with O as center and OD as the radius and this represents the topic of cancer. And when you draw a circle like this, this is the, uh, sorry, then you have to draw another circle with this as diameter, this point and this point, this is the circle. And this circle represents the ecliptic and this is the topic of cancer and this is topic of Capricorn and this is the, I think equator was this one. What is the equator? This one is the equator. This is the equator. So now, I think uh, this is just the stereographic projection keeping your eye at the south pole. So this is a, a three dimensional view. I will not go into detailed explanation, it will take time. And I also have never seen any astrolabe in my <coughs> But I think you can see if you go to Jaipur and visit that. Only thing you know that Jai Singh had a big astrolabe, but his grandson or son, I don't remember, he used it as a target practice and damaged it very much, you know, for his gun, you know, he was practicing. No interest in astronomy. So this uh, figure above shows the stereographic projection of the celestial sphere on the equatorial plane, keeping the eye on the south celestial pole. And the main purpose was, as you can realize, is representing the three-dimensional sky on a flat plane. So these instruments uh, uh, look like this. You have seen in history book or uh, history of science book. It consisted of number of discs. So the main container was called rete and then tin pans. These are number of thin, uh, number of them for different latitudes. Each latitude had one with lot of markings, etc. And they used to be kept in the frame and they could, they are joined by a pin and they could be moved and with all different adjustments. You could make lot of astrological cal astronomical calculations and computations. The details you can go to internet, you can see the website, detailed explanation is there how it is done. Actually I will also request some of you if you are interested in this institute things are done. Why don't you make a good astrology for IIT Kanpur, okay, and keep it somewhere. I will be very happy if I find it next time when I come, make one. You can get all the details in the internet of its making. And they look like that. And I think, you know, with the help of, with your extra knowledge and modern foundation in science, maybe you can develop a better one. Another kind of device which used to be used, which was also in ancient Indian astronomers used to be, they are called armillary sphere. Now the astrolabe was a two-dimensional projection of the sky on a flat plane. Whereas armillary spheres were actually three-dimensional system representing the sky, earth, etc. So this is one uh, typical uh, armillary sphere I am saying. So you see even uh, Aryabhatta describes, Aryabhatta starts saying, quote, the sphere or Gola Jantra, they used to call it Gola Jantra, which is made of wood, perfectly spherical, uniformly dense all round but light in weight, should be made to rotate keeping pace with time slowly as earth rotates with the help of mercury, oil and water by the application of one's own intelligence. So you can think of, you can apply your intelligence and make a device which will rotate with the earth. Now here you see that it was having, I have used different colors which is of course not the case. So this is the Vagola, Vagola means circles represented the earth things and this is the khagola that is the sky. So here you can see that uh, the circles 
and this is the prime vertical meridian. Then I think equator is this one. Where is the equator? This one. This is the equator and this is the ecliptic. There are two circles at 23.5 degree angles. This is one meridian and this is the axis about which earth rotates. And this is the 6 o'clock circle, there used to be one. And this is the south celestial pole, this is the north celestial pole. This Nadi is zenith. Kabula means? Kabula means this is the special celestial sphere. Yeah. And this is the horizon circle. So these uh, were used even in India. And I think if you look into uh, history of science books, a scientist sitting an astronomer, you will find <coughs> an armillary sphere there, you know. So uh, nowadays, of course, it is of no use because you can have much better things, you know, with the help of computer. You have seen that how you can have the planetarium software. There are far, far superior softwares which, of course, you can buy. But the software I have shown you and I am leaving it here, it is free, student version, and you can get it easily. Those who want, I think, request Professor Amit Datta, I think, you can copy it from here. I it am is not sure. Someone has to come to my office and take it in a pen. No, I am saying that uh, one can copy a software from after it is installed. I am not sure about these things. The okay. uh, computer science will be able to tell. It is hard. Because it is already installed here, can you take it? I think that will be better than in that case. Now I think I will uh, discuss I some. So yeah. when uh, one million of arc, Tycho Brahe's figure set up this astrologer. Tycho Brahe set up was this figure, no? Tycho Brahe. Mm -hmm. His set up was what he showed in the previous slide? No, 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 no. His oh, main uh, things were. Uh, his things were actually a quadrant. You will find that in those days, you know, I will show that more or less these are the instruments which I am going to explain now. What even from ancient times, you know, they used to use these as the common instruments. It will look to you not like instruments, like children's toys kind of thing, but it could give that kind of accuracy, you can see. So, do not have any disrespect towards these things, you know. One thing is most important instrument is in a moon or shanku. It is a, a stick put at right angles to horizontal and uh, its shadow of that is to be used for different purposes. For example, <coughs> if you have you are asked to find out the true north and true east, how are you going to do it? You can easily do it. Go to the ground and find out the true north and true east and true south. So it is simple. What they will do that they will draw a circle and at sunrise. So after sunrise, sunrise is here. Sometime you will find there is a shadow, some length. After a few hours, you again take the shadow and do it in a manner so that the length of the shadow is same. So how it is done? You draw a circle. And whenever the shadow tip touches that circle, you take two such shadows and then bisect it. It will show the, in the northern hemisphere, the, it will show the north, northern direction and perpendicular in this case. So that is the uh, simplest way on a sunny day, of course, not on a cloudy day, you can find out the true north true south, etc. And that was primarily what they have done. And Shonku had other kinds of things. And it is not only for finding out the true east, true west, uh, and true north, but also as a time indicator for the whole day. That has been, that's why sundial. Sundials are also basically a similar instrument. And you will see that our uh, Jai Singh's main things are basically similar principles. To him. There is one uh, Jasthi Jantra that is as a stick. It is only to find out the 
uh, uh, altitude kind of thing, the angle with the horizon with the particular thing, it could be sun, it could be other, other thing. But in case of sun, it will be done in such a manner that there will be no shadow at that instant and this is the angle which is the altitude of the sun. There is another kind of, just uh, there are two sticks, one is long, another is perpendicular short. <coughs> so, I want to find out the angle between uh, one direction and a star for example. So, I put the main stick towards the direction with which I want to measure the angle of the star and then this way I move this along this till this point and this point aligns with the star and then this angle you measure, you can measure. That is, that was used for finding out the, this is Salaka Jantra, this is Jasti Jantra. So they used for finding out the angle between a star and a particular direction, it could be another star also. Then we had staff, a Jasti Jantra, again another type of Jasti. And this is Sakata Jantra. So there is one string and there are two sticks hinged here. So that is also there, you know, how to measure the angle between two heavenly objects like this. A very simple thing, you know, child's play, not even TA 101 level thing. So this, these are called Chakra Jantra. So this Chakra Jantra, they are used by Aryabhatta also. So this Chakra Jantra was a hoop and diametrically opposite, there are two holes. So, you put it on a horizontal plane, you rotate the plane of the hoop about a vertical axis till <coughs> it matches with the plane in which the sun is contained. Then rotate the hoop without changing the plane so that <coughs> the sun ray pass through the two holes and falls here. So then using the dimensions etc., you can find out its azimuth and altitude, all those things you could measure. Another one is of course that uh, from the two ends there are two hanging strings and it is held in hand and from the later from the length of the strings you can find out the angle. Just a variation of the same principle of course. Chakra Jantra again some more Chakra Jantras. So here the vertical is indicated by a pendulum kind of thing. That is what our uh, plumb, our uh, plumbers too, you know, use. And then from the center there is a pin and there is a plumb and there is a hole and you adjust the hole in such a way that you can see. And this angle, you we'll call the zenith distance or the angle it makes with the vertical and so on. And here, this pin is here and this is a disc which is hanging vertically and then this shadow wherever it falls, so it will automatically, this is a perpendicular line to this and which has to be vertical because it is hanging. So this used to be called as the altitude obviously. And this is Dhanur Jantra, this is like a semicircle or Dhanus. So you put one diameter on the horizontal floor and rotate it so that the, uh, it matches the plane of this dhanus, matches with the plane of the uh, sun. And there is a pin here, you shift the pin along this till the shadow of the pin falls at the center. So therefore this I think gives various things like base, this is the base circle so you can get the angle altitude of this and also this is the sunrise point is to us like that. So this is called Dhanur Jantra. These are other types of Dhanur Jantra. Here it is a semicircle and there is a plumb and this is one of the radius perpendicular to this. Now you align this side diameter with the star with your eye and measuring this plumb location here, you can see that what is the angle and that is the altitude of the star. Obviously, because if this is a plumb, it has to be vertical. Similarly, here also you will find, you know, one thing you have noticed perhaps in some cases I am showing sun, in some cases it is star. Wherever you are using shadow kind of thing, 
it is because it is the sun and with direct viewing you can see it is a star say of course you cannot look at sun like this you know in no time you become blind now you know that when uh, we are asked not to look at uh, solar eclipse it is not any religious stigma it is dangerous the reason is very simple that uh, when the sun is full you cannot look at it it is so bright you, know, you cannot your lids will automatically close but when there is only a crescent of the sun you can very easily look at it it is so nice to look at but the image which is formed on retina of that crescent of the sun its intensity is the same so it damages the retina this is a proven fact and that is why it is said that not to look at because you can easily look it is a very thin line or diamond ring all kinds of things are told you know but the image which is formed it is as dangerous as the real full sun so therefore whenever there is a sun kind of thing it is always a shadow there is a pin here and so the shadow is cast here and you can say this is the altitude these are all variations of the same thing now this is bhagana or nari balaya yantra as you will see even jay singh did this nari balaya yantra now this plane this plane is actually parallel to equatorial plane you know and this is a pin <coughs> perpendicular to this at center and here the shadow you know on the equinoctial day shadow will not fall or it will fall on both sides and in the uttarayan period you will find at the when the sun is on the north then shadow will fall here when the sun is towards the south the shadow will fall on the other side and um, this way you can find out all dimensions measuring its angle and all those things you will see more detail nariwala yantra constructed by jay singh this is called kartari yantra these are all variations kartari yantra is again two semicircular discs at right angles one is east west one is north south and if you point it to the north pole you know and this will be the east west measurements and the markings are there shadow etc to measure this is also a type of kartari yantra but this kapala yantra is interesting <coughs> it is nothing but a huge bowl hemispherical bowl and at the top there are two cross where these are two thin wires at right angles two at two diameters and so this point is the center of the circle here and inside surface of the hemispherical uh, uh, surface they are given all kinds of markings then when the shadow of this cross wire falls on that looking at the location of this point you can get many things like time altitude everything you can get you know so these are called kapala yantra now you see i come to swai jay singh and uh, you should know little bit of uh, his life which is very interesting now jay singh the raja swai jay singh of amber he was born in 1688 and lived till 1743 now we have told that his position is very unique but also i think there are some unfortunate things you know so whatever the eurocentric western scholars might opine regarding the absence of observation in ancient indian astronomy but there are ample evidence as you have told so far now the uh, what happened that when jay singh inherited the throne of ambed after his father vishnu singh died in 1700 ad at the age of only 27 at kabul he was fighting mughal, along with the mughal uh, yeah. at that time mughal empire was on the decline and to control the marathas engaged in constant guerrilla warfare in the deccan jay singh was sent by aurangzeb to the south jay singh was only 14 years old at that time there when he was in the south he met a young mathematician 
and astronomer Jagannath. And that friendship was a lasting friendship and did everything. So what happened as such, the foundation for a lasting friendship with him was laid and after Aurangzeb's death in 1707, when Jai Singh was still in the south, the political situation in Delhi became very uncertain. The whole thing was being controlled by actually uh, a group of people that are called Council of uh, Amir Sarum Rahas, you know. And then Aurangzeb's great grandson, Muhammad Shah, as the emperor, Jai Singh was on a reasonably good terms. Aurangzeb, of course, was very old, you know, and served him in various capacities. Though to begin with, Jai Singh's control was over in his native area, Amber that measured no more than 7,500 square kilometer. By 1730, his authority extended to a much, much larger territory from Delhi to Narmada. In fact, during that period, Jai Singh enjoyed more power and respect than the emperor according to a French Jesuit traveler. Now, observators of Jai Singh, which is our interest. So whether Jai Singh had more interest in ruling a kingdom or pursuing astronomy is not known. But he knew Arabic and Persian and as well as Sanskrit and was quite familiar with Islamic astronomy along with the Siddhantas. He had a number of astronomers in his court. The most important among them was of course Jagannath and who translated al tusi Arabic version of Ptolemy's Almagest into Sanskrit under the title Samrata Siddhanta. His other court astronomer was Rai Kevalram from Gujarat and he wrote a dozen books etc. And Jai Singh also compiled a Zij called Zij e Muhammad Sahib in the name of his friend Muhammad Shah. But actually, it was nothing but uh, based, these days it will be called plagiarism. You know. What he did was uh, Uluk Beg's Zij actually. Now, interesting thing is that he was at a time when uh, uh, Copernican theory, etc., was there, it was known. But, uh, you know, uh, he was anonymous. He thought that the, he checked all the tables, he was finding the results were not accurate enough. And he thought that this non accuracy is due to inaccuracy in observation. He never suspected that our model of this system in the universe was wrong. So he thought. His main concern was Tychrobahe, like Tychrobahe, to improve the accuracy. And he thought that making instrument with small wood or metal pieces, they are subject to many distortion. He thought he will make observatories using machinery, stone, concrete, or something like that. And that's how, and he wanted to make them big. And that's why actually there are quite a few observatories he set up and primary aim was improving the observational last, uh, accuracy and uh, these are known as Jantar Mantra which originally called Jantra Mantra, Sanskrit term. In Delhi it was uh, constructed during 1721 to 24 and there are seven major instruments. <coughs> In Jaipur the construction was from 1728 to 1734 and there are 14 major instruments. Varanasi, 1724, and there are five instruments. Ujjain, there are 1730, there are seven instruments. And Mathura, 1734, there are five instruments. So these five Jantar Mantras were there. In Varanasi, I think uh, the uh, Jantar Mantra or the observatory was uh, erected on the terrace of Man Mandira. That was the name of a palace constructed by Jai Singh's ancestor, Raja Man Singh. You all know about him, Man Singh. And that's why today, astronomical observatories are called Man Mandir in India or Hindi, isn't it? And that originated from that. The Baranasi uh, observatory was erected on the roof of Man Mandira was the name of the palace. So we call uh, astronomical observatories also as Man Mandir. Now you see that uh, though his objective was to improve accuracy by having bigger system made of stone and masonry, etc. 
So the accuracy of Ulugbeg's observatory erected three centuries before Jaising has the same accuracy. Jaising's observatory instruments, as I mentioned, had plus minus three minutes of arc accuracy, <coughs> and is the largest one, the Samrat Jantra, which I will explain and discuss. It had plus minus one minute of arc accuracy, better than Tycho Bahe, of course. And the, that is also considered the limit of naked eye astronomy. Yeah. So, so the instruments were in sextant time. Mm -hmm. So there, I mean, one minute of arc. So which one was one minute of arc among the ones you described? Accuracy. That means suppose you are measuring the angle between two objects, uh -huh. or you are measuring the altitude, or measuring the uh, the azimuth. Whatever it is, any angle, because astronomical observation is nothing but angle measurement. There is nothing like distance. It is only angle. So the actual value and the accuracy with which you could measure it, that is this. So the sextant one, so it looks like they, I mean, one degree, like one minute, the has to be precise. Yeah, yeah. So that's why here we say it is like this. But in real life, it is not that simple. They were all genius to make the accuracy so high. So, I am told that each reading they used to take very accurately and there used to be large number of assistants also. It is not impossible to handle those, all those things by one person. So, Tycho Bahe also had a large number of assistants. Same thing with Jai Singh, they had large number of assistants. Just curiosity, did they have something like what the model telescope were here to… No, no, I understand that one gear kind of thing like your micrometer principle, no, they didn't have that. Micrometer principle was uh, discovered in towards the end of 19th century. So I think uh, uh, this is a very unfortunate thing, you know. And why it happened? Why Jai Singh didn't? It was there. Kepler's things were there. The heliocentric model concept by Galileo. You can see through this Galileo and Jai Singh, they are contemporaneous, isn't it? Galileo was born in 1565 or so and died at 1642. And Jai Singh's date, I told, was 1688. Actually, he was after Galileo, almost at the time of Newton. So, I think why, and by that time, gravitational law, etc., all are known. The reason is there. Now he, at that time, interaction with the West started and lot of Jesuit priests used to come from Europe. And Jai Singh and they used to bring, uh, I think, all knowledge of West, uh, I think, European astronomy. And uh, Jai Singh took lot of interest in that. And he used to depend uh, quite a lot on them. So once he sent a team to Spain, I think, or Portugal, I don't remember, with, his, with Jesuit priests to bring more information, more modern information. Now all the Jesuit priests were very much against heliocentric model, you know that. That's why Giordano Bruno was burnt alive, Galileo was put in jail. So they did their best to prevent Jai Singh in uh, getting active in heliocentric astronomy. So that's why Jai Singh depended on them so much on the modern development, but they almost isolated him from the devil. But it is told that Jai Singh had a telescope, I will read it later, and uh, he had something which is not known, but I have read in a history of science book published by your Indian National Science Academy. This I also didn't know, I will tell you here, I could tell it later, but <coughs> I think it is better to tell. Now Jai Singh knew certain things and perhaps did some experiment with telescope that need to be done. So, SM R. Ansari, he is a scholar who deals with the history of astronomy. I have read his paper and he refer, he reference to Jai Singh's knowledge based on telescopic astronomy are found on the following topics. The ellipticity of the lunar and solar orbits, the existence of four Jovian satellites, obloid shape of planet Saturn, because at that time the ring was not clearly visible, you know. Galileo saw it first, he saw, he first thought that planet has two years. 
And you know, in those days, the scientists used to do very funny things. He observed something, and then he thought whether to publish it or not. He thought that if it is something stupid, he should not publish it because there was so much of acrimony and other things because of the paradigm shift was taking place. So what he did, he sent a secret message which could be deciphered as the discovery of Saturn's these two bulges and sent it to some uh, other scientist, hoping that when later it is discovered and it is found to be true, he will claim his prize. But after some time, he was horrified to see that those bulges had gone. So he was so scared that then again, after quite a long time, he again was there. What happened actually, the Saturn the ring planes, at that instant, the plane of the ring was coinciding with our line of vision. So we couldn't see the bulge and play, play the, set, the rings are very thin, you know. So if, if you are looking along the, on the edge of the uh, ring, you won't see them. And that is precisely happened. With time, the, it, at that location, Jupiter, uh, Saturn's uh, ring plane was matching with the line of vision. But again, after some time, those bulges reappeared. And then he told that, you know, I have observed this, please. And also it was a new discovery, the planet with ears, you know. And later he found that there are two circles, you know. but he didn't know that they are rings. So therefore, the obloid shape of planet Saturn was the kind of knowledge they had, and phase of planet Venus and Mercury. So, the why Jaising did not pay too much effort and attention to telescopic observation, there is another theory, because uh, with telescope at that time, was a qualitative measurement. Till the crosswear was uh, invented and attached to telescope, it was not a measuring instrument. It was just a, like a binocular kind of thing. Once the crosswear thing was developed, it started giving numerical quantitative values. So telescope was not very useful as a, his objective was to have more accurate observation. That means he has to get measurements with telescope measurements were not possible at that time. Secondly, the heliocentric model of Copernicus, the results are no better than the geocentric model of Ptolemy. So there was no impetus on Jaising to really go for heliocentric model. But I don't know where uh, SMR Ansari found this, but he says that these are there uh, in the writings where Jaising, he had a telescope, and he had these observations. I will now discuss something about Jaising's instruments developed by Jaising. This is the most important <coughs> and most prominent instrument, you know, Samrat Jantra. And you have seen that it is nothing but a, a equinoctial sundial kind of thing. Equinoctial sundial, something like that Nadivala Jantra that a plane which is parallel to the a plane of the equator, that is sometimes they are called equatorial sundial, they are the same thing. And then there is a shunku and the shadow falls on that. So here you see what was the Samrat Jantra's basic principle, that this is a thin, just like a set square, you know, a thin slab, vertical, and this angle is equal to the latitude of the place and the location. And it is oriented towards in the north-south direction exactly. And then perpendicular to this plane, there was a circular path, Q east to Q west and starting from here. Then what happened, and this was a solid thing, so when sun comes, the shadow of this edge will fall at some location here. And that will tell you the time accurately. Have you gone to Delhi to see Jantar Mantar? <coughs> you have seen the markings, no? On, the, on marble, the piece of marble there, there. So if the sun is there, this will cast a shadow on the quadrant. In the morning, the 
shadow will be on the western quadrant and in the afternoon it will be on the eastern quadrant obviously and that will give you the time of the day just like a sundial. Again there is a rod here which you can move along this and there are markings. So this rod you are moving till the shadow of the rod falls at this point and the marking here will tell you the altitude of the sun. So primarily the time and altitude of the sun, these are the two things you can get very accurately with an accuracy of one minute apart. Size, size is bigger. Size is big, I am telling you. Its size is height of that end. Height is 22.6 meter. So a six story building I believe. So this is a six story high building height, 22 meters, 22.6 meters. The Delhi, that Delhi, it looks like this. And as I mentioned that uh, the declination north and declination south to find out right ascension and declination I told you in the equatorial system. So you have to shift this rod along this and when the shadow of the rod falls here, this angle is the declination and that is marked here. So one thing is very clear, the marking or engraving has to be non-linear. It is not linear, you can see that. So 45 to 60 is so much, whereas 30 to 45 is so much and 0 to 30 is only this much. So marking if you go to Delhi and you will see that they are non-linear. Now the actual shape of Samrat Jantra is something like this, isn't it? And let me see the photograph, I have a one. This is the one I am talking about, this Jantra. That is a six story building, you know, from here to here. And actually this is a smaller version. These are the quadrants, eastern quadrant, western quadrant. And the steps are there because somebody has to go up and down, now. yes? If it is inaccurate, obviously everything will be inaccurate, but it is obvious because you see it is equatorial system. That means this whole the, these these you know these are parallel to equatorial plane. Okay, and it has to be perpendicular to that. So anything which is perpendicular to that means it is nothing but the shanku. Like yeah, it is nothing but equinoctial sundial. Just that of a very large size. So if it has to be perpendicular to the equatorial plane, that means it has to point towards North Pole, isn't it? And this angle has to be latitude. So, so you have to measure the latitude using some other instrument to make the difference, right? Yeah, which you can measure. Measuring latitude is a relatively simpler problem. That is a relatively simpler problem. Yes? So for the time, it depends on the decimation on the season. Huh. So, that that so I think they had uh, for that tables etc. They all had that. So that means depending on the season, you know, uh, what is the declination, everything will change, of course. And uh, actual shape is like this, you know. I have gone one long back, you know. These days only I pass by that Parliament Street. Somebody is giving dharna and all kinds. It is used for that purpose, I believe, these days. And people take their, I think it is not allowed to take food inside, or is it? Earlier it used to be a picnic spot, I remember, in 62 when I was there. So these are the uh, Jai Singh's Observatory for Naked Eye Astronomy. There are various jantras, you can see. Other jantras, as I mentioned, Kapala and Jai Prakasha jantra. The Kapala Jantra, this is a huge bowl and I explained this and these are the two wares or ropes, this acts as a cross wear and inside the markings are there where the shadow falls and from the shadow the marking gives that what is the reading and somebody will go inside and you will see the size of this Kapala Jantra in Delhi, I think the diameter of the uh, this Jantra at Delhi and Jaipur 
Delhi is 8.3 meters, that is about 25, 30 feet. That is the diameter. Next is Digamsa Jantra. Digamsa Jantra is used primarily for uh, measuring the azimuth angle of the heavenly objects and it consisted of two concentric circular walls with a central pillar. I have shown that here. This is a central pillar, those two circular walls and uh, there is two ropes, one is east-west direction, one is north-south direction and another rope with a hanging weight here. So you can, when you want to view something, say uh, image of, of a star, so then you have to move this along this till this and these are in the same plane and this angle is given as the azimuth. So the size of the uh, jantra here uh, in Delhi, it was built only in Jaipur, Varanasi and Ujjain. Delhi it is not there. And the wall height was, this was a three-story building, this height, and this height was approximately just uh, almost slightly less than one story. So this was actually a three-story building. So it will look like a huge circular enclave. And this is the cross-section, how it is looking. This is height H, this is H by 2, that's the sectional view. But in not all cases it is H by 2, in Ujjain it is different as I can see. But these are all pretty big masonry works as Jai, he wanted higher accuracy. But the accuracy unfortunately was not more than that of Uluk Beg, which was constructed 300 years back. These are two important jantras, Nadi Valaya Jantra. These are again nothing but equinoctial sundials on two. One on the north face, another is the south face. These are parallel to equatorial plane. And this is pointing towards north pole, this is pointing towards south pole. Looks like this. And again a dial is there. So it is for measuring the time and identifying the equinoctial points. Equinoctial day, equinoctial day what will happen? that it will be exactly parallel and both will cast shadow. So that day and other days only one side will be having the shadow of the Next was Rama Jantra. So and uh, this is Nadivalaya Jantra uh, in Jaipur, the plate diameter was um, 3.6 meters. That means how many, how many feet? 12 feet kind of thing, 11, 12 feet diameter and the separation was uh, about 16, 17 feet. And Ram Jantra is, Ram Jantra name was given perhaps after uh, his grandfather Ram Singh, many people think that way. And the instrument was in the form of a cylindrical structure with open top and a pole with the same height as the surrounding cylindrical walls and the floor and the inner cylindrical surfaces uh, surface was engraved with scales indicating azimuth and altitude. It's very simple to follow. So there is a pillar here and these are all vertical line scales and here there are radial lines. So when there is sun, the shadow falls here and from that you can easily find out the azimuth looking at where it is falling in vertical. So when it is going here, then its marking will be here. So you can measure at a time, measuring the shadow and its location and the reading, you can get both azimuth and altitude. These are the main thing, these angles, you know. Astronomy is nothing but measuring these angles. So Ram Jantra, uh, its uh, size, let me see if it gives, yes. In Ram Jantra was constructed only in Delhi and Jaipur. Wall height and the radius for Delhi Ram Jantra about like a two story building. It is 7.5 meters. The accuracy for both of these, the order of six minutes of arc. All the marking, etc. So, six minutes of arc accuracy 
you had in this Ram Jantra. Then the most famous and most attractive Jantra is there, which is generally photographed. But it is really astronomically, it was never used very much and neither it gives any better result. That is called Mishra Jantra. One small thing, um, yeah. the diameter of the sun is about 20, 20 minutes or so? No, 30 point some minutes. 30 minutes. Half so, a uh, 6 minutes means one side of the sun? Only one minutes. side. They were very careful about when they touch one side comes, then only they take it. So then, okay. Yeah, they were very careful. So the Mishra Jantra, you have seen this photograph many places. <coughs> it is a very attractive structure and most photographed structure so far as this Jantar Mantra is concerned. But it is not really very useful. It was a combination of various Jantras, you know. It combined uh, Samrat Jantra, this Jantra and quite a few others. And uh, observationally it was not very important, neither was it very used. Only uh, it was a kind of very nice looking sophisticated thing and uh, I think uh, your uh, also pretty big I don't remember the sizes are not given here or uh, I think the scale is here so this is 20 feet as I have given the scale so you can see this whole thing is about 100 feet kind of thing it's a pretty big massive thing and you can see these are the quadrants and this size, this is one of the domon, Samratanamon, this is another Samratanamon, symmetric thing, this is another quadrant and this is a Nitya Chakra, I don't know, all kinds of things, you know. Now I think, you know, uh, Jai Singh's aim was to rejuvenate Indian astronomy rather than really pursuing the truth and unfortunately he could not achieve, he clung to the geocentric model. To bring the wisdom from Europe, he chose a wrong country, Portugal, for sending his envoy, not Italy. Thus, hardly any modern idea was brought back to him. He also spent money and effort on building perpetual machines. That took a lot of time and effort. It was said that an amount of equivalent to US dollar 25,000 was spent by him on experiments in that direction, constructing perpetual machines. Even though Jai Singh was born after Newton's Principia was published, Jai Singh's astronomy remained archaic in character. He had the telescope, but it did not occur to him to use it as an astronomical instrument. The reason I told you, it started becoming an instrument only after the technology of crossover was developed in him. So, uh, he died in 1743 and his second son, Madhu Singh, demonstrated some interest in astronomy. In fact, it was he who built the Mishra Jantra of Delhi. That, of course, many may not know. The Mishra Jantra was uh, constructed by his son. And that's why it didn't have much uh, astronomical importance. And uh, he had the opportunity to become a pioneer with his resources, his interest in astronomy, his wonderful assistant like Jagannath, but I think, you know, he chose the wrong people and the result was this. <coughs> the, the last one in the whole history of uh, Siddhantic astronomy was uh, Samantha Chandrasekhar of Orissa. Now, the, he was born in 1835 and died in 1904. So you can see it is a very recent thing. He was even in the 20th century. And the last Siddhantic text was written by him. It is called Siddhanta Darpana. It had 24 chapters and had 2500 slokas, out of which 2284 was his own composition. And uh, he was definitely a very talented person. And in seclusion, he grew up. So he was unaware of the happenings. You can see by that time in India itself, even, telescopic astronomy was quite prevalent, but he clung to the same old Siddhantic astronomy and naked eye astronomy. So the, in spite of that fact, of course, his Siddhanta Darpana, his main, he noticed the inaccuracies and he tried to improve the accuracy. And you can see the improvement, which is very apparent here. These are nothing but the inclination of the planetary orbits according to the various Siddhantas. The planet orbits, you know, Various planet orbits are inclined to the ecliptic plane, as I mentioned. 
So that angle is very important to make good uh, estimate and good correctness. So you can see the uh, five planets, you know, here and uh, along with moon, they are inclination to the ecliptic plane. In Surya Siddhanta, it is moon 4.3 degrees. In Siddhanta Siromani, it is 4.3. Siddhanta Darpana, 5.09. And actual modern value is 5.0833. So you can see the substantial improvement, which is the correct value. And Siddhanta Darpana, Samantha Chandrasika is this. Whereas the old values were quite inaccurate. So when you go to Mercury, which is very difficult to observe, you know, Mercury is so near Sun, extremely difficult to observe. So the Surya Siddhanta gave a value of 5.55, Siddhanta Siromani gave 6.55, your Siddhanta Darpana gives uh, 7.02, and here you can see it is 5 degrees 09, I must say you should keep that in mind, up to minute of arc, second of arc you can ignore. So 5.09 means 5 degrees 09 minutes. Here it goes up to second modern value of course. So 7 degree 0 to minutes. Siddhanta Tarpana was so accurate here it is 7 minutes and 0, 0, 18 seconds. So I think it is very clear that he made a tremendous improvement in accuracy with his instruments, also simple naked eye instruments, which he designed, he constructed and fabricated. So he didn't have a big instrument like guessing? No, all the handheld. So, and, and you can see the improvement in accuracy. So his, uh, his life history you can find in the book. I'm not reading it. So his instrument, his own observational instruments he developed. Of course, they will resemble some of the instruments in Siddhanta text, but one of his instruments called Monajantra is very interesting, you know. It looked like I, I am unable to resist the temptation how it looked. I am giving some approximate. So these are serrations with different angles, you know. And uh, this was his own invention because no such instrument is found in any Siddhartic or other text. And with this, Manojantra was his own invention. It was a multi-purpose instrument that could measure, you see, latitude, altitude, zenith distance, sun's declination, angular separation, and the sun's position in the zodiac. And this instrument in the form of a T, as I showed, and cross staff was engraved with 24 slots with progressively increasing inclination, and it could do so much with such accuracy. He also designed Chapo Jantra for measuring of measurement of time, and Golardha Jantra, and that was also similar to Kapala Jantra, like that. So uh, his uh, Siddhanta Darpana is still in use in Orissa because all things, puja, sacrifices, etc. in Jagannath temple, they are all guided by uh, Samantha Chandrasekhar's calculations. And not only there, but even in the society of Orissa, most of the households follow the panchang prepared following the Siddhanta Dharpana, even till today. So, uh, however, uh, the fact remains that he was very much in the telescopic era, but he devoted his whole life. Actually, he was not known. Then one, uh, uh, I think it is sometimes just for the sake of the story, you should know. Samadhi Chandrasekhar was 
reputed more as an astrologer. People thought he's an outstanding astrologer. He was a gifted astronomer and he was born in 1835, as I have shown, in Khandapara, 100 kilometer west of Bhuvaneshwar. It was a small state surrounded by hills and jungles. Samantha was born in a royal family when his uncle ruled the small state. His early education was primarily in Sanskrit and Sanskrit-based literature. At the age of 10, his uncle introduced him to the basics of astronomy and Samantha himself learned the Siddhantika astronomy. When he was 15, he wanted to check the astronomical predictions of Siddhantas through his own observations with the instruments made by him. To his utter dismay, Samantha found the predictions to fail in predicting correctly the positions of the planets and stars. Repeated checks finally convinced him that established texts like Surya Siddhanta, Siddhanta Shiravani needed further correction. Then he took it as his life's ambition to incorporate all the necessary corrections in Siddhanta astronomy. Amazingly, he designed his own instruments for naked eye astronomical observations, yielding results with much better accuracy. Starting at the age of 15, Samantha Chandrasekhar began his astronomical observations and theoretical analysis for the next eight years. Reaching the age of 23, Samantha started systemizing the huge data collected by him and at the age of 26, he started writing the text compiled by him, the last Siddhantic text, Siddhanta Darpa. He wrote the book in Oriya script on palm leaves. Because of his isolation from modern educated world, the text remained confined to a corner of his house for 30 years. On its chance meeting with Professor Mohish Chandra Nairatna, principal of Sanskrit College, Calcutta, during one of his Orissa tours, Professor Nairatna was greatly impressed by his talent and it was Professor Nairatna who introduced Samantha to Professor Jogesh Chandra Roy of Patak College, present day Ravenshu College, who played a key role in getting the Siddhanta Darpana published in Devnagari script from Calcutta in the year 1898. Only after this, the outside world came to know about Samantha Chandra Sikha and his valuable work. So that is the end of Siddhantic astronomy in India. And I think tomorrow, the last, uh, what I'll do, I'll give some interesting, uh, very interesting, and it, in the history of astronomy, they have remained as uh, fascinating stories uh, with tragic uh, results. Sometimes they're not, uh, they're very tragic stories, you will see. And uh, the beginning of uh, telescopic astronomy. But major part of tomorrow, I'll also discuss the, um, whatever the re recent research tells about the antiquity of Indian astronomy and also the originality, how much of it is original and some discussion on the controversies about the originality of nakshatra system, different scholars view, I'll discuss that. I'll not discuss much about the uh, de development of radio telescopy, etc. in India. That is a modern period and that is not the objective of this because they are all current things going on. So I think if there are few questions, we can discuss that. Yeah. This Jogesh Chandra Rai, yeah. is he the author of this book on, uh, Bengali book on Jyotishi? Do you know? I don't know. Bengalis who have done a lot of work in the 19th century was Kalinath Mukherjee, mm -hmm. was one, and 20th century have told P.C. Sengupta and others. But in the previous century, Kalinath Mukherjee was actually, you know, inspired by Herschel's grandson. He was a civil servant in the district of Nodia, where and he taught Herschel's grandson, uh, Kalichar Mukherjee, and he was a lawyer, but he used to practice astronomy at his home. So how is the story of Siddhantic astronomy? I think uh, it is very interesting. You have you have already found out. You know we are discussing about the cutoff of the system. So he has worked hard and he has found out. Yes, that slope gives the value of pi. Mm. I think uh, it is that Sankaracharya, uh, Puri Sankaracharya, uh, who has also written that Vedic mathematics that book. He has given that. 
So was there interaction with mathematicians and astronomers? It's, uh, yeah, they were actually the same thing. Mathematics, a oh, lot of development, trigonometry and other things on astronomy. And astronomy also a oh, lot to mathematics. And since Indian mathematics was most developed, so it is obvious that uh, our things will be superior to others. So, uh, one more question. So, they had, did they have school like when students would come to them? Was some system built especially for Aryabhatta or later they on? Might, no, they had disciples, obviously. They had disciples. The whole subject, I think, there are thousands of astronomers who have worked. We have presented only absolutely small, minuscule fraction of that. Even I have not been able to discuss Parameshwara or Nilkantha, who were the Kerala very famous astronomers. Sir, you have shown the instruments. Hmm? You have shown the picture of many instruments. No one has used magnet as a means. Uh, what? What? No one. You have shown many instruments. Uh -huh. No one has used magnet for as what? A direction. Purpose. The magnet doesn't give you accurate direction at all. Magnet is not. Magnetic north also varies from place to place, from time to time. It is also, they don't, you are interested in the celestial pole, true north, you know, not the magnetic north. Magnetic north is different from the true north. But it was known by Indians. It was known to Kepler. Actually, at that time, I think his name was Gilbert, isn't it? Gilbert. Who wrote the first book. That was at the time of Kepler. And from that only Kepler got the idea of gravitation. The idea of gravitation first came from Kepler. And he told that every object attracts every object. And they move towards a common point. And the amount of movement depends on their relative bulk. So it is, Newton is not the originator of gravitation theory. This is part of his three books, you know, uh, the Kepler's, this idea of gravitation. Hmm? It's not part of his book. Is it, is it written in the book, or Kepler, this idea of gravitation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, you can even get it. Okay. It's all very clear, you know. Only thing, problem was, it, uh, he thought that uh, gravitational force, uh, uh, the force was proportional to velocity, everybody. Yes. The concept of accelerating and linking with force was first by Huygens. Yes. That was the real breakthrough. He showed that force is proportional to acceleration. And the constant of proportionality was m, that was Newton. So the omega squared r was known to Huygens. Omega he developed it. He developed it. And using that and Kepler's uh, third law, they found out that the gravitational force is inversely proportional to square of distance yes. by Halley and who? That was also known much before Newton. Okay, any other questions? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's thank for the whole